Hey folks, Aaron here from Bean Sprout. Um, one of my customers, Tom, sent me a box of old uh, hand tools, and they are general. I think they're all pretty much from the 19th century, and they're of the kind of ubiquitous pattern that would have been used all around the Western world, wherever um, joiners and carpenters uh, and cabinet makers worked. And he thought I would like to look at them and put them to use because of my research into these. Um, uh, instrument makers from the 1890s in Hawaii um, because they were trained cabinet makers. And so, uh, you know, a box like this comes with a lot of weight for me. I don't take this sort of thing lightly. Um, these are items where people made their living with them and uh, they've been sitting around for a while not being used and now I might get to use them. Um, but it also comes with a lot of labor. Like old things need a lot of attention to get them back running, but once they're running and you know how to take care of them, they um, just produce what you want to produce and they put money in your pocket and feed your family and that weight is not lost on me. A ton of labor though would have to go into these to make them all functional and working again. So let's just talk real quick what he got. I'll try not to go too, on too long. The first thing is he sent two braces and a brace is the old um, technology for holding a bit to drill a hole or to bore a hole. Um, and uh, this one is a, a nice small brace boxwood and, and, and steel and it the bits you put in have to have this tapered um, squarish profile and this one's missing a little thumb screw it needs something right there to hold them in um and this is a really small one kind of like a little gentleman's one or something i could see it just having one commonly used item and just hung on the wall like this then this one is really kind of breathtaking um all these details are turned on the lathe so works really smooth and beautiful lots of brass on this one and uh it has a button that has a little catch inside so i imagine that the bit set that went with this went in and then it caught on a little lip to hold them but this one's not currently fitting or holding any of mine so i think it might be for a different pattern or something well maybe it holds yeah not really i have to research more about that but it's obviously just like a very beautiful item he sent three marking gauges Marking gauges are, um, instead of scribing a line with a pencil, you would um, scratch it with this pin or sharp knife blade. And a scratched, sharp scratched line is uh, finer than a pencil line would make. And so a lot of old woodworking is done this way. And a lot of the old things I examined still have the marks from these uh, left behind as ghosts. Um, this one is boxwood, pretty simple. It's got a little rosewood cheek there for, that should be upside down then for uh, riding against your wood. Um, this one is Stanley, this is 20th century, a little sweetheart gauge, um, also nice. But this one is the one that kind of takes my breath away. It's Brazilian rosewood and brass. And it's got two functions here. On one side, it has the pin for a single, scribing a single line. So like if I was working on a fretboard, I might need to scribe a center line uh, to, or something like that, or down the center of a neck blank maybe because everything is often built off the centers of what we do. So you could scratch that in. But then this side has a, a double knife to uh, mark the uh, parallel lines. So that's typically where you would mark the mortises for like a window or a box or something. But uh, a lot of the old Hawaiian instruments I've been looking at, they have a strip down the middle of the fretboard that's um, got uh, binding or uh, edge banding inlaid into it to make a decorative center strip. And so I could see scribing two parallel lines down the center of, a, of your fretboard stock uh, in order to uh, mark where you're gonna saw and chisel away the waste. So this is really cool. And, um, oh yeah, and then this, these two pins, they adjust their distance apart with this clever brass mechanism that goes throughout the entire tool. It's just really amazing. This is a beautiful thing. I don't see a maker's mark on that one. I'm not sure where that came from, but it's really cool. Another one that'll go to work pretty much right away as a spoke shave. This is a plain blade, a thin plain blade set in handles and it's used for carving. And so I carve all my necks every day with a spoke shave. Um, this one has some markings for uh, who made it. Uh, looks like John Booth and Son. And then over here, another thing, it says something, something New York Institutes. So maybe it was made for trade school or something. Um, but yeah, it's just adjusted by tapping these two pins to hold the blade in and out. And this one even shocked Nicole when she picked it up. It just feels like a thing that's been held a million times. It is like 
finely burnished with just like your your hands and your own wear. It's just really, it's undescribable to hold this thing. It's so unlike holding a metal item. Oh, and just for fun, you know, like this is my normal spoke shave. This is more of a 20th century item, um, Stanley version. So uh, yeah, not that I don't like holding this. It's just, there's something weird about this. It's really cool. So I'll put that to work too. Um, he sent this, I think this is for stretching ladies gloves. Not sure, probably not a woodworking tool, but that's okay. Okay, so now some wooden planes. So you're used to me seeing pushing wooden planes, more of this pattern, you know, uh, Stanley items. But the wooden planes are a lot lighter, and then it has just the iron wedge, or iron, um, iron, the iron, uh, set in with a wooden wedge. And uh, a couple of these are joinery planes, uh, they would be very useful for some of the stuff I do. And I think this is the kind of plane that like um, these Hawaiian ukulele makers, Portuguese ukulele makers, you would use to make the boxes to put the instruments in. So this one specifically is called a side bead and it makes a little profile like this, a rounded profile on the edge of something. So I could see that on the lid of the box or something. And also it kind of hardly, it burnishes this curved edge so that it's really hard wearing compared to a regular square edge. So we already got that one going, although I do want to hone the blade. Okay, so the way these work too is often the, the maker is on here. It says Ohio Tool Company, and then the number for the size, number 37, half inch, it says. And then on the back, you see places where I, um, their hammer has struck to adjust the plane. So you like drive the iron in the wedge down with the taps here, and you back it out by tapping the plane here. Um, and uh, it feels good. We got it cutting last night. The next two I think are even cooler because they are a match set of tongue and groove planes. So tongue and groove boards are really useful in all kinds of cabinet work, you know, for the backs, for um, shelves, for whenever you need to join two boards together like that. And I could see making little tongue and groove bo um, bottoms and tops for the little ukulele cases. Um, these ones do not have a maker mark on it. Um, they just say seven eighths, so they're for seven eighths inch boards, number 10. And um, they do have some like iron on the soles and fences. Maybe it's brass. It's really dirty, can't tell. I think it's brass. And that helps, um, you know, keep them accurate. This one does have a split right there, but I think it's okay. Now, one thing that we see on these old tools a lot is people's names and initials. So this one, this person's last name was Morgan and he stamped it in several places. Um, a lot of folks worked in shared shops where your equipment was kept in your own chest, um, but you had to mark it with your name, everything with your name, so that you could keep track of whose is whose, but also that property is like literally your family's bread and butter. Like you can't lose these things or have them stolen. Also, I've been told that um, some trade guilds or unions uh, or like in, or for insurance purposes, that you had to mark your name so that you could prove they were yours and maybe you couldn't get your tools insured or passed down through an estate properly if they weren't marked. So I often find tools with two names or three names, which means they kept going, which I think is pretty rad. So anyway, this one, it says Sherman Brothers. It's got this guy Morgan who owned it. Um, and this is a little more complicated plane. It's called a moving filister. It's basically for cutting a rabbit or a rebate. That's just like a step down on the end of a board or the edge of a board. Um, and it's kind of got some gizmos to it. This um, fence goes back and forth, so you set the width of your cut, and then it has a depth stop for how deep you want it to go. Um, and uh, it's got a skewed blade, which is nice for cutting across the grain. And it's a beautiful little piece. I think I'm gonna definitely use it. Um, I have a kind of later metal version that I use sometimes. Um, but I could see using this one for sure. Um, and then there is one more molding plane that's looking good. Kind of a complex, well, it's like complex for me. Uh, molding maybe for a piece of trim or something. It's a cool little plane. This one, I believe, is marked Dawson. Somebody named Dawson owned this plane. And it doesn't have a maker's mark. Um, and then we have a few or two that are in poor shape. And I'm not totally sure what's going on. This one says Auburn Tool Company and... Um, I believe it used to be a, a complex molding plane or just a hollow or, or just a, a round, but this bed 
is a really weird shape and it's kind of a gross shape and it's very crudely hacked out. And then the blade is rusty, kind of ruined blade is also hacked to a similar profile. And then the fence has been replaced with just a piece of pine nailed on. Um, so I'm not sure what this plane was supposed to be, but it has been user modified to the point where I'm not sure what can be done with it. And then another one that needs repair is this kind of complicated one that has these uh, cool wooden thumbs, cool wooden screws, basically wooden nuts and bolts somebody made uh, in order to change its width. And this used to have two irons in it. It only has one iron and two wedges. And I believe this is um, something for sash making. So sashes like window sashes, like window frames, all the wooden pieces, they often have little complex shapes to them. I believe this is a sash plane. It says Ohio Tool Company. It's got somebody's initials. It says number 128. Um, yeah, and it's missing this iron, and I think this is just a straight skewed iron, so it wouldn't be crazy hard to reproduce. Um, but I don't, th I'm not sure this iron accurately matches this profile, so I'm not sure about this one. Um, so, oh, and then a piece of what I think is cocobolo, so maybe some kind of rosewood tom scent. It's really cool. Probably use that for repair of old instruments. So, yeah, uh, whew really cool box. I think I'm going to get a, maybe one or two of these working right away um, and learn more about how they work. And then I just got to keep chipping away at it. I can't, don't have the time to restore all these properly right now. Um, I'll just probably work on them as I need them. And the couple that need extra repair that I'm not sure what to do with, I'll probably pass those on to someone more qualified to work on these old planes because um, I don't want to mess it up. And, uh, you know, some things like the doubles of marking gauges or whatever, I'll probably give those to other people who want, who need to use them. And yeah, we'll keep going. Um, it's really interesting to hold the wooden planes instead of the metal ones, um, cause it's just a different vibe. Um, but they all need cleaning. They all need sharpening. They all need waxing. It's going to be, it's going to be a project, but I appreciate the opportunity and I am looking forward to using these. So thanks Tom. And, uh, I'm sure I got some things wrong. Sorry about that. But, you know, message me if you have questions. Cheers.